Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Inget Zoom Series 27. Today, our guest is Professor Dr. Gölge Seferoğlu. Uh, Professor Dr. Gölge Seferoğlu is a faculty member at California State University, San Bernardino. She worked at Middle East Technical University in Turkey for 23 years. She has been published and cited extensively. Dr. Seferolo also served as the Dean of uh, College of Education at uh, the Middle East Technical University for four and a half years. Her research interests include social justice in ELT, technology enhanced language learning and teaching, pre and in service teacher education, and quality in education. Her session title is Weaving Professional Development Through a Different Lens, Internal and External Forces of Change. Thank you, Gergel Jam, for accepting to be our guest speaker this evening. Uh, welcome again. It's so nice to see you and be with you. And the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, Aida Nojam. It's my pleasure and honor to be with you today. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, but it's not fair. I would like to see all of you, all the hundred of you, but unfortunately, um, I cannot. I can only see maybe 10 of you <laughs> next to my screen. Uh, so thank you so much, all, all participants, colleagues, friends, former students, um, for being here. Um, for uh, uh, your support and uh, for your participation in this session. This is the uh, formal title page, formal title of my presentation. An earlier title was um, this. In fact, I proposed this title, but I haven't heard from Aydan Hoca for a while. So I thought uh, perhaps she didn't approve this title <laughs> because the title is Prince Charming, Come, uh, Can You Come and Rescue Me? Um, no, well, she hasn't said anything. I am kidding. But uh, later I thought um, I will be using this uh, in my um, evaluation reports here in this university. So it might be a better idea to use a, a professional uh, title. So you, you probably wonder what does it, uh, what does Prince Charming have to do with professional development? Uh, I hope you will see in the following uh, slides. Before I start, I'd like to thank uh, Aida Nojam and Suzanne, who perhaps is not here today because she has internet pro uh, connection problems, but uh, they have contributed to Inged uh, so much from the very beginning, and it's it's great, and I uh, appreciate and admire their uh, hard work and passion for Inged and for all ELT teachers in Turkey. We are you are very lucky to have them, and I also would like to thank the uh, Inged um, all committee members and everyone contributing to Inged because it's volunteer work and it's hard work. So congratulations and um, and also thank you so much. And can we just give an applause for all of them? I'm clapping myself. Um, I don't know, John. Uh, by the way, girl, girl, John, this year, Defne Hoca joined the board. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, her Defne picture... us. Okay, that's wonderful. Her picture and her name is not included in, in your web page. So oh. I'm sorry I missed that. I didn't know that. Um, thank you, Defne Hoca, for uh, contributing to METU and at the same time to INGET. And I would like to take this opportunity to uh, uh, honor the memory of Sarpar Tumar, who was a dear colleague and friend. Uh, this picture uh, was taken in Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Uh, Susan, Sarper, and I uh, were sent to Addis Ababa University, uh, Ethiopia, ages ago uh, for a mission. <laughs> uh, and I miss her dearly, and I just wanted to uh, honor her memory. 
and she also contributed to INGET a lot. So this, are you waiting for Prince Charming to come and rescue you? So like um, I told Aydan Hoca, because I won't be able to interact with the other participants, I will be asking the questions to you. And <laughs> so Aydan Hoca, uh, are you waiting for Prince Charming to come and rescue you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know that there is no Prince Charming. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, I was planning to, if, if we were in a hall, conference hall and all together, I mean, uh, there's a song, I just uh, found out the song uh, titled Prince Charming. And, uh, you know, if we were in a conference hall, we, we would, uh, I was planning to have uh, us listen to the song and dance maybe, but we don't have much time. So if you're interested, uh, you can, uh, it's a nice song. You can uh, listen to the song and enjoy. Um, so it's, um, as you know, uh, Cinderella is one of the most favorite fairy, fairy tales and um, all girls uh, dream about becoming princesses and they wait for a handsome prince uh, coming along and saving them. And then they will live together happily ever after. So um, a few days ago, we had Hudrelles and I don't know whether you wrote this kind of a note, dear Prince Charming, you are extremely late, please hurry up. I don't know, perhaps some of you wrote this note and just um, tied it to the rose tree uh, in, um, you know, a few days ago uh, during Hidrelles. Uh, so the link between Prince Charming and um, professional development is here. We have a lot of expectations from others. We always expect others to make us happy, to bring us things. Um, uh, so and as teachers, teachers expect a Minister of National Education to provide um, excellent uh, professional development opportunities, courses and other things, uh, et cetera. And we blame uh, Ministry of Education not providing meaningful, and uh, you know the best um, opportunities. Or if we are working at a private institution, uh, we expect uh, the institution or administrators or other stakeholders to uh, to just present us, provide us the best opportunities. So we have expectations uh, from others. Um, so. But this come and rescue me approach or others know better than I do approach um, um, does not really work because nobody knows better than you do about your own professional development and your own teacher identity. You are unique um, as your fingerprints are unique. Your identities are unique and your contexts are unique and your mm, dispositions and characters, uh, personalities are unique. So the ba bad news is Minister of National Education may never come and rescue you. You probably know this by now, so it's not, nothing new, new news. Uh, so in the real world, the only person who could rescue you is you. The question is, or two questions, does life just happen to you or do you make life happen? That's the question. Uh, I would like to quote uh, from Mevlana. Uh, Yesterday, I thought I was smart. I wanted to change the world. Today, I am wiser. I am trying to change myself. Here, I would like to thank Joshua Hojad, Professor Joshua Baer, for translating this. Um, uh, while I was preparing for this talk, um, I tried to translate, well, of course, there are translations available, but I tried to translate it myself uh, to find a better translation. And I asked for Joshua Baer's help, and uh, of course, he translated it <laughs> better than me. So this is his translation. Um, uh, credit is 
uh, his, and I would like to thank him for, uh, uh, for this. So it's not only professional development, but in the life, in every, in every sphere, in every aspect of life, we have to make up our mind first. Do we want to survive, just survive, or thrive? So this is another big question. Uh, because whatever we do, how we approach life, how we approach teaching, how we approach learning, how we approach professional development, all uh, they all boil down to this question. If we just want to survive, we are in an automatic mode and we don't do much to, to grow uh, and to change. So in one way, we are our own enemy because um, if we are happy within the borders of our comfort zone, then no need to change. Okay, so here I have five signs. Um, you are living on autopilot. So try to just, unfortunately we cannot um, interact, but try to just uh, reflect on your life uh, and your choices and um, try to answer these uh, or try to evaluate whether you have these uh, five signs or not. The first one is you dread each coming day. There's nothing you are really looking forward to. I hope none of you, uh, you know, feel that way, I hope. The second one is you let other people's expectations define your choices. So this is also in relation to this expecting Ministry of National Education to provide you, to offer you uh, opportunities. Uh, because whatever they offer you, you will choose among them or you will, you know, you will follow that professional development activity, but the choices are endless, in fact, um, if you are not dependent on, uh, on the institution. And the third sign is uh, you are always either busy or distracted or both, and you never pause to reflect on. Uh, what you are doing, why you are doing it, um, etc. This is true for your life. This is true for your teaching. And uh, the next uh, sign is you feel time flies and you, you don't remember what you did throughout the day. And the other one is, um, you feel like you are not making any progress. Everything is the same. And, but you are com too comfortable and prefer to, um, uh, you don't want to avoid, uh, you don't want to step outside of your comfort zone. You are happy as uh, whatever you have, the existing, um, the current situation, and uh, you, you are afraid to take risks to move forward. And the last one is, you know your life or teaching could be better, but you feel stuck. And um, you daydream about having taken a different path, but like it's, you are not active. You are not in control of your um, destiny, whether it's your life, you know, personal destiny or um, professional destiny, you, are, you feel stuck. And uh, three ways to stop teaching uh, on autopilot or living on autopilot. Begin my, by making tiny changes. Sometimes the biggest mistake is, you know, uh, there is a big gap between your existing situation and the, you know, your goal, your dream point. So you give up because the gap is so big. Um, it's very important to, you know, uh, take baby steps. So make tiny changes. And then, you know, it takes time, of course. Uh, nothing happens like this quickly. Uh, the second um, one is choose one meaningful goal and go for it. Don't do it. 
anything which you know somebody else does because somebody else does or because the book says it because your mentor says it or your administrator says it it has to be relevant and meaningful to you whatever it is and the last one is really important it's reflection metacognition reflection you know there are different labels for that but make time for conscious thinking and reflecting on what you do uh, that's that's the first step perhaps uh, in making changes so um those of you who attended my uh, previous sessions uh, may remember um, uh, men my mentioning about learning learners as agents um, being in control of their learning um, responsible for their own learning uh, etc so if we expect students to be learning agents the same thing should be true for teachers teachers should be active they should be learning agents uh, in their professional development so teacher agency in professional development is um, is important. Um, the different, uh, remember the title of my talk is uh, seeing professional development uh, with a different lens uh, from a different perspective. So this perspective is a personal development. So professional development as personal development. Here the focus is knowing yourself, uh, investing in yourself, um, uh, will, being willing to uh, uh, grow and explore outside your comfort zone, and uh, valuing challenges, and uh, knowing that every challenge is an opportunity to grow. You may remember this guy from my earlier uh, talks, perhaps. Matthew Luberman uh, is a, a psychology professor um, at UCLA, um, and he, uh, he proposed, he suggested that uh, we need to uh, change uh, this uh, Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, if you remember Maslow's hierarchy, the, at the bottom, we have physical needs like water, uh, you know, food, et cetera, sleep. So Matthew Lieberman proposed that we should put social needs um, at the very bottom. So social needs are uh, very important, uh, he argues. And this is uh, his book, uh, famous book uh, titled Social, Why Our Brains Are Wired to Connect. So uh, he proposes that we should put social needs at the very bottom. So they are the primary needs um, in life. So he put social needs um, at the very bottom. Now I have uh, another proposal uh, regarding Maslow's hierarchy. I believe that ourselves are most important, not others. Uh, I don't know whether you read this um, news um, published in the New York Times, but UK appointed a minister for uh, loneliness. This, uh, this um, news, this article appeared in the New York Times in January, 2018. So um, Prime Minister Theresa May uh, appointed a minister for loneliness. And then if I am not mistaken, Japan followed uh, UK and they also appointed um, a minister for loneliness. This is important, uh, and I would like to um, uh, make a reference to a, a, a social media, uh, you know, uh, quote from Aydan Arsus. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't translated it into English, but um, she uh, this um, links uh, loneliness to. Um, to others, um, you know, being um, not sincere, et cetera, et cetera. So they, people feel uh, they are better alone because, uh, you know, being social um, doesn't do any good. <laughs> so I believe 
uh, first and foremost, you should improve your relationship with yourself. You should have a healthy and good relationship with yourself before having any relationship with others. So before having any relationship with all the stakeholders in education, your students, administrators, and others, the most important point is having a healthy relationship with yourself. Learning, according to um, the uh, P21 Summit on 21st Century Learning, uh, learning uh, has uh, three components. One is cognitive, the other one is intrapersonal, and uh, the third one is interpersonal. I think perhaps this uh, uh, reflection um, and um, uh, evaluating yourself, uh, etc. All those things are very important before you come to cognitive area. So people come and go, you should focus on yourself first. And you should celebrate your um, unique, um, whatever you have, um, with you, uh, you should celebrate it, you should appreciate it, and you should build whatever you have in your hands. You are all unique and different, and you have different colors. So personal development, there are different uh, ways of, uh, to approach personal development, but knowing yourself, listening and observing yourself, um, reflecting on what you do, what you feel, uh, etc., uh, are important. And based on this, you take an action, you take some risk, risks, and you, you develop and you grow. So this is another uh, chart um, trying to show different uh, components of personal development. Identity, of course, identity is uh, very closely linked to personal uh, development. Okay, again, this is another, um, uh, I stole it from Aida Noja. <laughs> she shared it uh, on Facebook. Uh, teachers professional development model, um, it approaches it, you should have a sense uh, of necessity and then readiness to experience anxiety or difficulty. Um, in the following slides, I will mention um, uh, to be able to develop, grow, you need to be uh, flexible. You need to uh, um, just uh, be comfortable with ambiguity. So whatever is, you know, may give anxiety, difficulty, challenge, or things may be ambiguous, things may not be clear. If you are comfortable uh, with ambiguity, um, there's a, you have a more chance of um, development and growth. So um, I am getting older and the more I, um, uh, you know, um, uh, the more I age, I realize how little I know about myself, life and the world around me. So it's, a never ending process um, learning. Now, <laughs> while I was thinking about that, you know, uh, never ending um, life is uh, just learning all, you learn all through, throughout your life. I remembered a PhD jury meeting after which Professor Baer turned to me and said, during these dissertation meetings, I feel we are the student and the PhD candidate is the professor. He knows, who, you know, who this um, uh, PhD candidate was, uh, but it was always like that. I mean, he would always he was resistant to change. He wouldn't listen to us. It was impossible for us even like to to persuade him to insert to add a, a section called participants in his uh, dissertation. So we. We were just, um, you know, exhausted, and we were frustrated, um, and we felt um, we felt okay with being students. <laughs> uh, 
I, Joshua Hoca is here, Hüsnü Hoca is here, and I think that shows that they are lifelong uh, learners. I mean, th this is uh, this is the reality. You cannot, you are never done. Um, you continue learning all the time. And every time I have a discussion with uh, students, colleagues, everyone, I learn new things and I acquire different perspectives. And as Albert Einstein said, once you stop learning, you start dying. So at this point, I would like to thank um, all my former students, current students, my colleagues, everyone, uh, because I learned uh, an enormous amount from them about life, learning, teaching, and you know, many things. And their influence, uh, whatever I present here today, my talk, everything, uh, it's all, you know, accumulation of all those experiences and, um, and after the experiences, of course, reflecting on those experiences, connecting it uh, with my already existing um, schemata in my brain, et cetera. Uh, so if you if you are just uh, not open to um, open to experiences, things may happen around you. <laughs> you are there physically, you know, but it's not. You never internalize things. So uh, here uh, in two slides, I have seven personal growth questions every teacher must ask themselves. So. The first one is, what is most important to me as a teacher? You know, we, we have different answers. Uh, for me, you know, I like inspiring my students. I like to be a role model. I like uh, to learn together with them. Uh, so this is what this, the answer changes. Uh, you know, it, there's no one correct answer to this. And the second one is what takes me out of my comfort zone? Again, this is a very uh, unique, um, the answers will vary, change, because it's not easy to, to be willing to go out of your comfort zone. And the, the drive uh, changes uh, depending on uh, you know, the person. And the third one, how can I make sure I am learning every day? I mean, make sure you learn even like, it's not like you don't learn a new language in one day every day, but learning, you may learn very tiny things, but you learn every day. It may be a good idea to note down what you learn every day at the end of the day, perhaps. And the fourth one, what is the most amazing thing about me? And how can I use it in my teaching? So we have different strengths. Some, some of us are very good at, um, you know, connecting in social interaction, et cetera. Some of us uh, have strengths in other areas. So you should reflect on yourself and uh, find that uh, most amazing thing about yourself and use it in your teaching. The fifth one is what is the most important thing my learners need from me? Again, the answer differs. Some teachers may believe that uh, they need grammar. <laughs> Some teachers may believe uh, they need um, uh, they need um, a, a, a relaxed atmosphere. You know, they need to be um, uh, their um, uh, as Krashen uh, calls it, their affective uh, filter should be down. Some might believe they should. Uh, have a lot of homework, I don't know. So we have different beliefs. Teacher beliefs, uh, it's a different area. And the sixth one, how can I connect and communicate better with parents and colleagues? This is challenging, I know. Uh, it's not, <laughs> it may be easier to connect and communicate with students, but not with parents and colleagues and administrators. Uh, but um, that's, that's an important skill. And the last one, uh, what am I going to start doing today to become a better teacher than I was yesterday? 
you can try different things. Uh, for instance, for me, I'm a very impatient person and I, you know, I don't wait, I don't have enough wait time when I ask a question. Usually I just, just you know, don't wait uh, enough and I just um, answer a question. So it again changes from teacher to teacher. So you can do very, again, um, minor things to change um, and to improve your teaching every day. So I listed, uh, characteristics of teachers open to change. Um, um, earlier, I mentioned this comfort with ambiguity. This is very important. You should like, don't expect to be comfortable all the time. There may be challenges, there will be things which will make you anxious. That's life, that's normal. So just uh, embrace all of those and, uh, but, but try to find a way to, uh, not combat with it, but like dance with it. I like this dancing idea. Um, Doan Jujelolo uh, used this dancing idea. We should dance with life, uh, he would say. So you should dance with all the challenges. You should not just fight, but you should find a way to, you know, put a step forward uh, another step backwards, perhaps, you know, find a way to handle it. So a passion to work for reasons that go beyond money and status, that's for sure. Uh, the flow experience, resilience and grit. Uh, I mentioned uh, these two are, I believe, very important in success, um, resilience and grit. Service to community. You know, having that that uh, characteristic in internally, and willingness to go the extra mile, and dare to be more. Again, you know, willing to take risks and willing to go out of your comfort zone. So this is a. Uh, the grit book, uh, Angela Duckworth. Um, published and it's the New York Times bestseller um, if you are interested. And the mindset uh, idea was discovered by um, Carol Dweck. Uh, she divides uh, you know learners and non-learners uh, the world into two. And maybe if we go over this quickly, uh, growth mindset, um, uh, people believe that challenges help them to grow. Feedback is constructive, even if the feedback is not constructive. I know, like, especially in the Turkish culture, <laughs> unfortunately, the feedback is never constructive. Uh, it's probably, you know, I lived in Turkey for uh, 23 years, and probably the most uh, one thing I missed about the United States was this appreciation and constructive uh, feedback. Unfortunately, in our culture, this may be a little missing. So fixed mindset, if you look at um, uh, at the very bottom, um, we have, I stick to what I know because it's comfortable. So if you are like this, then try to try to challenge that and try to change. Okay, we don't have much time. So this is the last chart uh, showing uh, fixed and growth mindset uh, people. Um, fixed mindset people avoid challenges. They ignore criticism. They feel threatened by others. But growth mindset people are inspired by others' success. Um, they embrace challenges. I already mentioned those. Okay, at this uh, stage uh, in the presentation, I would like to um, refer to um, a PhD dissertation by Fatma Gümüşok. Um, my, one of my, I think she was my 43rd, <laughs> 43rd um, PhD student. Uh, she defended her uh, dissertation this past um, summer, 2020. And uh, in this uh, dissertation, she uh, looked at uh, 
a case, uh, this case, um, a case, Minister of National Education um, uh, project, a teacher training project. Um, first, we trained a group of teachers. Uh, and then together with those teachers, we trained all English teachers um, in, in uh, Turkey. And Aida Noja was part of this project um, and she contributed a lot. So uh, Fatma Gümüşok did a dissertation on, on this um, project. So if you're interested in learning uh, about a successful uh, attempt, successful project, uh, by Minister of National Education uh, teacher training project, you may want to uh, read uh, Fatma's uh, dissertation. So what he, she found was um, teacher change includes, see all of those things like, yes, of course, uh, they need to learn uh, pro propositional knowledge, knowledge about the subject English uh, and procedural knowledge, but also personal knowledge, personality traits, leadership qualities, uh, uh, constant search for improvement, uh, et cetera. So these are personal um, qualities and personal learning is always coming up in all different types of research um, because it's, it's crucial. So this is the title page of uh, Fatma's dissertation. And uh, this displays uh, the, the different phases of uh, the training process uh, between 2009 and 2011 or 12. And I'm, I'm, this is the only picture I have in my hands. Uh, so this is a picture of teacher trainers we trained and other teachers. This is from Sparta. The whole uh, project uh, started um, in Sparta, and then we went to all cities, all cities around the, around Turkey, and um, we uh, trained all English teachers um, uh, in Turkey. So, um, in different places in uh, Fatma's thesis, you will see that uh, this experience of transformation uh, the teachers went through. Uh, this is, uh, there are a lot of narratives, uh, a lot of explanation of how teachers transformed during this uh, experience, during this project. So I'm not, we don't have time to go into details, but maybe I marked this, this uh, section. So one teacher said, the implementation of reflective cycle, what, why, what did you do? What could have you done differently, et cetera. So this helped the teachers um, change, they reflect on their practices and change their practices. So this reflection uh, component was really important. So there are different charts, but again, we don't have time uh, to go into details of this, but as you see, self-knowledge and also social knowledge, those are important. Uh, remember I said, um, uh, Matthew Lieberman suggested that, you know, social skills are important, social knowledge. And I propose that personal knowledge and self-knowledge, reflexive knowledge is more important. They go hand in hand. They are both important in whatever you do and in teacher change and teachers' professional development as well. So again, this is another figure from um, Fatma's uh, dissertation, uh, the personal in the job. So it's all, you cannot have like, uh, recipes for uh, teaching or pr professional development. Everything is unique and you have to discover it for yourself. Okay, final remarks. Um, in professional development, there is no happy ending because there is no ending. Learning and development continues till we die. And now I have this, Picture, can you guess um, 
why I have this picture in the presentation. I guess that's for I don't know, Prince, do you have any idea? Prince Charm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charming. No. Okay. Uh, Just kidding, I, of uh, course. <laughs> I know it's difficult uh, to make uh, a connection. Okay. When I arrived uh, here in the States, they just rolled out the, the red carpet for me. They said, oh, Gölge Hoca is coming. So let's, <laughs> okay. I am kidding. No, they didn't do that, of course. Uh, uh, I started here as an associate professor uh, and I am going through academic evaluation, classroom observations and etc. So like, uh, some people say, I mean, they really say uh, I had no, I mean, no concern, no problems with that being an associate professor here. But some people said you were, a, you were a full professor and how could you, um, you know, accept the job um, as associate professor and etc. It's no problem. And it's, uh, if you approach it from a uh, learning perspective, it helps me to learn. I mean, I'm learning every day. Of course, the student population is very different here. You know, they are diverse. They come from different backgrounds. They know a lot of languages. Here, I feel myself uh, like uh, really like monolingual <laughs> because uh, people speak very different languages um, and uh, there are there is so much to learn. But in one way, it's a challenge. But uh, in another way, it's great. Uh, there are so many things, so much um, I can learn. So there is no red carpet. <laughs> so don't expect, I mean, yes, you may, yes, of course, like compared to yesterday, compared to 10 years ago, uh, you developed, you know better. Yes, that's true. But it's a never ending journey and you should never expect anything from others. Um, and you don't expect any red carpets. <laughs> so um, these are my last slides. Uh, I just uh, would like to uh, make a reference to this, um, uh, this poem by Atal Behramol, because I think it links very well with this question, do you want to survive or thrive? Because if you survive, you miss so many things. It's like time passes by and you are not aware of anything. You don't do anything. You, you are not a really, you just exist, but you don't live. So um, if you wanna try, then you need to, you need to uh, put some effort and um, do something about your uh, development. So again, I would like to ask the same question I asked at the beginning of the presentation. Does life just happen to you or do you make life happen? Uh, all of us have some, I know sometimes uh, we feel powerless uh, and we feel there is nothing we can do. That's, everyone feels that way, uh, but there are so many opportunities and we can make life happen. So again, I would like to thank um, Aida Nojam and Susan uh, for this great opportunity uh, for bringing all of us together. And you are wonderful. You are doing it every week. Uh, it's, it's a great contribution. Uh, and I thank you so much, uh, Aida Nojam. Thank you and very finally, much. finally, this oh, is my okay. last slide. Ah. Happy Mother's Day. Um, this coming uh, Sunday is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day. Well, thank you, Gergo Jam. What a nice uh, talk, as usual. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. Um, I have noticed some remarks and some questions in the chat box. So um, if you accept, I can raise them. Uh, sure. Well, uh, first, Defne Hoca uh, said, can people learn to have a growth mindset or are we stuck with one of these? 
Okay. I guess meaning very, fixed mindset, I guess. A very good uh, question. Uh, I don't like categories because nothing is black and white in fact, but sometimes to be able to understand phenomena, we, we, use cat we have to use categories. So it's not that, uh, you know, you are all fixed mindset or you are all growth mindset. There are like uh, 50 shades of gray. <laughs> so there are different, you know, it's a continuum. Um, so you may have some, um, uh, some characteristics uh, which are uh, not uh, open to change, but some others may be open to change. So of course you can change, but, but as I said, um, um, at the beginning of the talk, um, if you feel the gap is very, you know, large, it shouldn't frighten you, and you should just you should just um, develop strategies to make tiny baby steps. So, just what is the next step? It's not you. People do not change in one day. It's impossible. You have to plan, and you have to develop strategies to to change. Of course, you can change. Okay. Um, dear colleagues, if you have a question, rather than unmuting yourself, first please either raise your hand or write it in the chat box and then unmute yourself because then we will start hearing all the background noises and it's really disturbing. Uh, so I have another question here uh, from Azra Hoja. Uh, she says, how can we know our mindset in uh, on the way of revolution and also ours uh, as our jam I think I failed to understand what you're asking are you are you asking whether we can reflect on ourselves and understand our mindset is that it are you there, Azraoja? Would you like to raise your own question? You may express yourself better. Please unmute yourself and then, ah, okay. Yeah, so, good job, good, good job. Uh, can we understand our own mindset? How can we do that? That's the question. Okay, well, um, as I mentioned, you have to uh, you have to know yourself. You have to develop self awareness. You have um, positive sides and negative sides, or well, not again, not cat categories are not good. Maybe not negative, positive, but you have um, uh, some sides uh, qualities which you can improve on, uh, and you you can you should. Um, you know, reflect on yourself and and uh, just uh, explore it. It's not it's not easy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's easy to say it. It's not easy, but uh, you can do it. Um, and especially if you have a good mentor, um, uh, you can have a good you know a, a colleague you trust mm -hmm. maybe uh, may help you. You know, in Turkey. Uh, I talked about this in other uh, presentations. In Turkey, we cannot have a tradition or habit of uh, observation, you know, uh, our colleagues observing each other's classes mm -hmm. because we are we feel threatened. We yes. even like we don't want our even our closest friend uh, to come and observe us. Uh, we feel not comfortable. So it's again uh, perhaps related uh, to our culture. So you should develop that um, uh, flexibility and uh, you know being okay with uh, criticism, being okay with uh, ambiguity, etc. But like invite someone you really trust and and use that uh, criticism, whether it's uh, not constructive criticism, still you can make use of it. Yeah. Okay. So can we say that, Gorgojam, we need to learn how to give feedback first before we start learning how to observe someone. As you have said, we don't know how to give feedback and it's always criticism. 
Is, is that correct? Do you agree with me? That's correct. Yes. Thank you for bringing that uh, point. That's very important. Not being judgmental. Mm -hmm. the, the key word is judgmental. Mm -hmm. We always judge. Uh, we always compare. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have some norms or we, have, we compare with, um, you know, others. And we are judgmental. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem with ourselves too. I mean, uh, we are very harsh on ourselves. <laughs> so we shouldn't be harsh on ourselves, and we shouldn't be judgmental in um, in evaluating uh, or in our reflections too. So yes, um, but I believe again. I mean, it starts with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you should mm -hmm. describe yourself. You should uh, be non-judgmental to yourself. Um, uh, if you can do that, then you will be non-judgmental in um, giving feedback to others. That's my feeling. Yeah. So it, we have a long way to go. That's what I understand. Because uh, this morning I had a talk with uh, university students. We discussed there the fact that when we observe someone, we praise their practice if they do something that we do. So if they do yeah. something different, whether it's successful or not, that gets on our nerves. <laughs> so we like similarity, sameness, but we don't like different. Would you agree with that statement? I would, I would. And it's also, uh, again, it's linked to this um, comparison thing. Mm. We always uh, take a norm. The norm could be ourselves or whatever na in uh, native speakers in the case of like pronunciation and et cetera. Mm. So we take a norm and we compare ourselves or somebody uh, with that norm. Mm. And you, you're right. I mean, um, whatever we uh, do, is the best and we expect the other to do it mm -hmm. that's true mm -hmm. and uh, as teacher trainers teacher educators uh, that's something we should be aware of because you know even like i find myself in evaluating student work as well mm. like uh, recently um um uh, I'm teaching in TSO, MA TSO program, mm. and we have a comprehensive exam, and I write the questions for the comprehensive exam, and I evaluate them, and I uh, evaluated uh, students' comprehensive exam responses, and then uh, I always do that. I just evaluated them, but not, you know, submitted the grades, and then I just reflected on my evaluation, and I noticed um, I ex that I expected uh, students write um, or have the perspective I presented in classes, <laughs> but but some of the students didn't take my classes, so it mm. was like, and I don't I have no way of knowing what the other teacher you know mm. presented. Of, although the yeah, textbook and the syllabus is the same, but still, so yeah, uh, we sh should be careful about that. We should be aware mm. of our own. Um, you know, our own perspective may, um, may be twisted or yeah. it's not fair to expect yeah. um, uh, that yeah. perspective. We from, may not um, be the perfect uh, model. Uh, yes. That, that is something sure. that we need to accept first. Yes. Well, uh, Azra Hujam has another question, however, uh, Azra Ujam, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to raise this question because this is more related to assessment and Gyorgy Hoca's uh, presentation was more related to, well, not more, but related to professional development. So maybe we can have another uh, session uh, on assessment and we can discuss these. Mark Ujam, uh, has a question. Uh, how can we help our students on the journey with hybrid online education? How can we help them to accept the change? Well, it's not within the perspective of what, what you have presented, but we would like to hear what you think about this. Um, I can um, 
well, talk about my uh, depend um, using my uh, experiences here, um, uh, teaching experiences here uh, at Cal State San Bernardino. I can talk about uh, reflect on my experiences and um, respond to that question. I think it's very important that students um, do not feel alone. Uh, because sometimes teachers just upload material or like, yeah, mm. so everything they feel they're all alone. They are not supported. Um, the materials are there, but there's no guidance. There's no scaffolding. Mm. Uh, scaffolding is very important. Uh, and you, you should do it um, in your materials and tasks and also during your zoom meetings mm -hmm. uh, it's of course it's not the same as face to face but uh, if you develop if you define and design and develop tasks which uh, are conducive to uh, interaction mm -hmm. um, uh, even online interaction uh, it helps mm -hmm. uh, and especially if you let students get ready before um, before the meeting that's my strategy what mm -hmm. i do is I give weekly assignments, um, discussion board assignments usually, mm -hmm. and um, they need to submit it uh, before our Zoom meeting. And during our Zoom meeting, I just, um, you know, um, uh, as prompts, uh, I have those questions or similar questions because they already um, had, they thought about it, they reflected on it, and they submitted their discussion board um, contributions, uh, they are, they join the discussion readily. Uh, mm. So there's no preparation needed, they have already have this background and reflection. Mm -hmm. So one way of doing it is uh, giving um, meaningful uh, uh, assignments uh, before the meetings. Mm -hmm. And be careful. I and mean, it's always a good idea to um, to let them uh, give them opportunities to link uh, what the content to their um, context and background uh, life or experiences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it enriches the classes as well. I mean, because they have a chance to mention. So there is no just one right answer. Everything should be. Um, uh, trying to see different perspectives, uh, different uh, linkages. Uh, so that's what I uh, suggest and trying to be prompt in replying to email <laughs> messages. Um, so whatever you do, uh, just make sure that students feel you're always there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, I mean, you don't have to be there in front of the computer all the time, but mm -hmm. the feeling, you know, mm -hmm. they know, um, that's, I mean, I don't know whether it's appropriate to share here or not, but uh, that's what, that's the feedback I received from my um, classroom visitors uh, mm -hmm. during my classroom observations. They didn't see the other classes. They just come and observe your class. Of course, you share your materials with uh, the observers, but their feedback was uh, the students trust me uh the uh, you know i was able to establish rapport establishing rapport and you know um uh, letting students be themselves uh is very important that comfort um but of course uh they should um put some effort mm -hmm. um so yeah uh you should be a role model uh if you want your students to do something if you want them to study hard you should study hard <laughs> yes and i also suggest uh, you visit our youtube channel uh markoja we have wonderful videos there uh by soner yıldırım by amanda yeşil bursa by anıl hocam anıl söylemez uh kenan dikilitaş these uh, uh, academics all talked about how to motivate students during this transitional period, how to deal with this online thing, being isolated, you know, being uh, far away from social life, you know, that kind of thing. I, I cannot think of the others, but there are several uh, various videos. Uh, uh, just uh, watch them whenever you have time. Uh, Merve Hocam has a question. 
what can we do for our students to change their own fixed version of mindset by themselves? Hmm. Maybe okay. another session. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as I said, first, you have to be a role model. Mm. So um, they should, well, they, whatever you do is transmitted to the students. Mm. So it, for instance, if the teacher has a passion for the content or the teaching, it shows and it's just, uh, it spreads uh, like a virus and it just goes to the students. So uh, if the teacher is a learning teacher, and mm -hmm. that's what research also found. Mm -hmm. I mentioned it in an earlier presentation. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, research showed that uh, among all the, uh, the factors in uh, student learning, teacher learning is the most influential. So if they have a learning teacher, students learn more. So they, they observe you, they see you uh, in every way. If, for instance, if you listen to them, if you pay attention to them, <laughs> that's a sign that you are a learning teacher. Mm. If you ignore them, if you focus on something else, um, uh, if uh, you exist in the classroom as a teacher physically, but your mind is not really there, they, they feel that. So um, first, be a role model. That's the, I think, most important thing. Second, uh, uh, just um, co con connect with every student. Uh, you have to connect. Uh, it doesn't have to be like time is, of course, important, but you can connect easily <laughs> if, uh, if you uh, really want it. So even in your reflections, in your feedback to your to, to student work, you can do that. By, your, by just looking at the student, you can do that. Um, so your body language, uh, everything uh, is a sign. And believe me, I mean, yes, of course, some tasks and uh, assignments, those are important, but even uh, your tone of voice, your, the way you look at, the student, uh, your um, gestures, your body language, everything uh, has a meaning and signals something to the student. If the student, students may feel comfortable to come up and ask, uh, what can I do for myself? And you know, you can help the student. Mm -hmm. So uh, just be, a role model and uh, try to communicate, connect with the students and respond to their individual unique needs. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. There aren't any uh, academic questions, but there are some uh, personal questions. So okay. um, I will just stop recording after thanking you. And then if you want to stay here, for a while, you can uh, have a chat with uh, Gölge Hocam if she has time. I don't know. That would be wonderful. Okay, great. So let me officially uh, uh, finish this and this uh, session. Uh, Gölge Hocam, thank you very much. Uh, it was, I didn't understand how time flew really. It was wonderful and uh, it was a, a, definitely an inspirational talk. Thank you very much. Uh, there are lo lots of thanking messages here. I will, I promise I will copy them and send them to you. So you will enjoy those uh, messages. And as usual, thank you very much, dear colleagues, for uh, coming and attending this uh, session. It's always uh, great to be with you. But don't forget that uh, your health is more important than anything else. So stay safe and take good care of yourselves. Bye. Thank you, Aida Nojam. Um, it was wonderful to see all of um, the participants here. Unfortunately, I couldn't see everyone, but thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, it was wonderful to be uh, with all of you here together uh, today. Thank you. Thank you.